Yo, you know what it is, Queen David. We out here, bro. Um, welcome to the pen click making poetry posters in Canva tutorial. Honestly, this is more of a um, Canva introduction. How to put text on a photo is essentially what we're trying to do because dope poetry deserves dope visuals. Again, um, in this era of uh, social media, internet, and all that, um, we want our content to be received in the way people want to receive their content on the platform, on the respective platforms. For example, uh, Twitter is primarily text, right? So, you know, uploading, you know, five minute long YouTube kind of content videos is like, it can go off on Twitter, but that's not really what Twitter's used for, used for, you know what I'm saying? Instagram, Facebook, uh, those are visual mediums for, for the most part. So we want our poetry to translate properly. All right, that being said, the levels of uh, visual poetry. This is something that I covered a while ago in a previous tutorial. And this is around where we're gonna be at for today, level 1.5 to level two. Level two, um, you're, you're starting to uh, layer photos, composite photos, and uh, try to make the, um, the poetry seem like it's in the scene. On Instagram, I said uh, I had a poetry prompt, Instagram.com, just pen click. Please follow us if you haven't already, P-E-N-C-L-I-Q-U-E for the most amazing poetry content on the internet. And this was our prompt, right? The other day, Mrs. Daniel Hees and I, we uh, we picked a winner and it was, bum ba -da bum it was Yellow Rocking Chair. Here we go. So congratulations, Yellow Rocking Chair. Today I'm gonna make a poetry poster based on your poem. And the poem goes, Sirens ring loud through dimly lit alleyways. Echoes of danger bouncing off stop signs. Even so, I can still hear your whispers rattling gently on my eardrums. Yo, 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 round of applause in the comments. Let's go, guys. Um, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna take this exact photo and we're gonna, um, and we're gonna like pretty much position the text all around it just to figure out like how this will look overall. And then we go back to Canva and we're gonna create a poster. They have a lot of templates. They have like, you know, Instagram sizes, square, vertical, IG story sizes. But for today, we're gonna go with poster. Their poster is actually pretty close to the vertical Instagram size. So that's uh, 1080 wide by 1350 tall. This isn't exactly that, but it's pretty close. So uh, we're gonna go to photos. We need to, we need to upload stuff. So if, if you go to photos, that's not your photos. This is like stuff that they have that you can use, but you'll see that there's like, um, like crowns on them that that's for their pro account, which we don't have because we're doing the free thing. And they also have, you know, premium assets that you have to pay for, which we don't care about because we have unsplash even better. So we're going to upload. Uh, we're going to upload images and you, um, you'll tap like upload an image to, or for a video. And I already had this there, so bang. Okay, so now we have an image, and you'll and um, the first thing you'll see is that you'll see they have like these um, dots around. What that means is that you can you know scale it up, scale it down, and it'll scale um, in proportion. And then you can also rotate, which is pretty cool. But we're not gonna rotate her, I don't think. So the first thing to do is that we want to fill it up all the way. So. As you'll see, um, this is the maximum height, but we want to go, uh, we want to fill up the whole thing. So we can actually uh, click drag the right side and it will um, proportionally scale it up all the way, which is nice. And that means that we still have stuff above and below it, kind of. Um, and um, But you don't see it, right? It gets cropped, it gets automatically cropped to the camera size. So what we got to do is we have to either double click or if you're on the phone, double tap on the image. And now we can see like more of the image. We can um, adjust the crop. I want the girl to be in the middle, but because um, there isn't any more photo to the bottom, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna scale this photo up more. And the reason why we're scaling it up is so we can um, we can place her in the middle. So because we're scaling up the bottom as well when we scale up the whole thing. So bang, now she's in the middle middle. Great. Before I begin um, putting text, uh, the photo itself, it's a little low contrast. What contrast is, when something is low contrast, that means that the highest point and the darkest point are closer together. So maybe it's grayish, um, but 
pure contrast is like you know like super bright super dark and you can you can see like, like they pop against each other so that's so that's where contrast uh, uh plays an effect there's a time and place to do low contrast but in this case we do actually want to um, make it more contrasty just to make it pop a little more so first thing we're going to do is that we're going to brighten this and um, all what brightening is doing is that it's just like making everything brighter. But we don't want everything brighter. We only want the brightest things brighter. Um, so what we have to do is that we have to increase contrast. So it'll make um, it'll keep things bright, and then it'll make the darker um, the shadows darker. So we increase the brightness, and now we're going to increase contrast, right? If I didn't do that, if if, bright, if brightness was at zero, and I just increased contrast, right? Boom. Um, because uh, there was there was so many shadows in the first place, um, it's just making all the shadows darker. And there was so few highlights that there was not much to uh, make brighter. But if we um, if we introduce that brightness, and now we have more things to make brighter and fewer things to make darker, then boom. Right? Cool. So eh, maybe a little brighter still. All right. So right now we're just adjusting um, our initial base uh, photo. Uh, saturation, that's how much hue, that's how much chroma. Chroma is the word for color. That's how much color is in the photo. So if we um, desaturate, if we take saturation down, it'll go turn black and white. If we crank it all the way up, it'll be like comically too colorful, like tint. Um, tint, uh, tint creates like, it just like, uh, does a color wash over everything so um imagine that like you know how some street lights uh have an orange glow then um what we'll if we wanted to replicate that what we could do is that we could just make the tint warmer something like that so now if you imagine you know like that orange glow from from street lights that's closer to what it might look like but i'm going to increase the contrast a little more because that tint kind of washed out some of the shadows so I'm bringing in more contrast, bringing in a little more brightness. It's a fine game. It's a lot of like, you know, um, a small adjustments here and there. X process. I have no idea what this is. Yeah, no idea what this does. This is not a thing we do in Photoshop, <laughs> but whatever. Sure. Vignette. Vignette is um, so in cameras. Um, it's a circular lens, and then towards the edge of the lens, sometimes sometimes that's where uh, like certain shadows happen on the camera iris, and that's where vignettes come from. Uh, and it's I, 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 to introduce a digital vignette. It's it's a fake thing, but the reason why you would want to create fake vignettes is to bring more attention to what's happening in the middle. So let's say there's a lot of like busy stuff happening on the outsides. You'd probably want to darken that um, to make the center um, stand out more, more contrast. And that's when you would introduce a vignette, and that's what's happening here. Boom. So suddenly. Um, now like uh, this light here and this and this uh, reflection of the light here gets darkened and now we're looking more at her. But I don't really like that look, so I'm just gonna, right? if we were just gonna take uh, this poetry, so command C. All right, um, what we're gonna do is that uh, we're gonna have this small and to the side. The reason why is that we just wanna use this for reference, okay? Uh, we're going to use this as a reference to just copy and paste as we um, individually uh, place our text about. So we're going to do this two ways. We're going to just use straight up digital text and then we're going to do the handwritten style. Okay, let's first get some text. Um, boom. There's a rule of thumb in design where they say um, uh, stick to one font, which for the most part is true, um, or stick to one family. The reason why is because it keeps everything consistent. But once you learn the rules of typography, then you can start playing around with multiple fonts. But starting out, um, if you don't know what you're doing, then might as well just stick with one font. Next is font selection. How do you select a proper font? Um, just go and vibe. You know the right? font vibes? Uh, right now, this, this uh, stout, sans serif font it gives me like um like a 
you know, don't do drugs, PSA kind of vibes, which we don't want. Let's first understand the copy and then think about the the vibe it's trying to put out. So it's like like hopeful, melancholy, emo type vibes. Yeah, so that's that's what I'm getting. And when I think about that, I'm thinking maybe like, you know, thin text. You know, think about someone that's kind of like straining, like thin, you know, tall, thin text. Or or maybe maybe some kind of handwritten thing. So let so that's what we're gonna look for. Bang. All right. So we're gonna and pretty much like uh, all the grayed out fonts. Those are all the premium fonts, which we don't have, but we don't care. All right. All right. That's that's terrible. That's not good. What about this? Ooh, look at that spacing. Let's um. All right. So letter spacing. This is, this is a bit of typography 101 for y'all, all right? The space between letters, that's called tracking, right? So uh, so when they say like, like uh, this text is widely tracked, that means that uh, there's a lot of space between the individual letters. There's a time and place to do that. Like uh, they give a certain vibe. Um, and then um, uh, really tight tracking, um, the when the letters are really close, you know, that, that has its own look as well. The individual spacing between letters, that's called kerning. Why? I have no idea, but that's what it is. So, that being said, uh, we're gonna go back to our image and uh, we're gonna mess around with the letter spacing. Because when something is, when there's small type, I don't know why, when there's small type and then the letter spacing goes wide, it just looks classy for some reason. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it, but it works. Actually, let's go bold at this time. Now, now that it's smaller, we actually have to uh, beef up the the weight of our font. Bomb. All right, and then let's and then let's. All right, cool. Um. I like the I like what I like like all the all the geo, geometric lines that are going in the background. So like the the the, the bridge is going this way, but her arm but her body is like going the opposite way. So what if we try to match her body, and then we're gonna go middle right, and then we're gonna move it around here. Sirens sing loud, dimly lit through alleyways. Ooh, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, like, we got maybe we got something. Maybe we have something here. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, how I decided the the placement of the text. What I'm looking for is like um like uh, uh, space symmetry. So the space above is pretty equal to the space below, as well as the space above her, but like between her and the text is similar. It's actually like a little tighter up here. So I'm gonna mess around with this. We might actually have to move her up. Move her up a bit. Yeah, tight. Tight, tight, tight. Okay, very simple. We could say we're done here. So going back to this example, right? Um, it looks like, you know, like uh, pieces of, uh, you know, strips of paper that were cut and then, you know, kind of like pasted onto this photo. It kind of gives it like a, like, like a, like a scrapbooky type of vibe, which communicates a certain feeling. You know, it might feel more retro, more raw, more gritty. Um, but at the same time, it's it's contrasted emotionally contrasted against something very you know uh, um, very nostalgic and very quaint and and uh, peaceful. That being said, we can do the same thing. How to do this? First, we have to draw the text, and I'm gonna do that right now. A few moments later. So that's what we got. Yeah, sorry, I actually ran out of space there. I didn't realize. So, boom. Cool. And uh, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take our phone and take an actual picture of this. There we go. All right, tight. Yo, so, dude, that totally worked. Okay, I'm just gonna delete these. Bam, bang. And uh, what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna crop these. How you crop this is um, you, you uh, double tap or double click 
and you should be able to, yep, just click drag the corners. Bang. Um, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's adjust this. All right, cool. Uh, and then we're gonna rotate. We're gonna try to match this girl. Ah, uh, I'm not feeling this. Ah, uh, let's just do it from scratch. All right, brightness. All right. duplicate and um okay so you know that uh, there's more photo in this um to access the rest of the text we just double click it and then we just locate our text here enter or commit and we're gonna see like right here you see the bottoms of the y's of alleyways which i don't want so i want to actually Prop that out. Boom. Cool. Okay. Um. Uh, we're forgetting the byline. The byline is um. Uh, is he just like, like who is it by? It's by Yellow Rocking Chair. Um. Unfortunately, I did not write her name. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna um. All right. So I actually wanna. Yeah, I'm gonna put it here. I want this to be like really small, like really subdued. And we're gonna space it hella far out. It's not the same. Um, let's get the same angle. Ish. Okay. That's cute. Ah, this. All right. Let's just make sure. I wonder. If, does it have like a position? Yeah. Cool. So um, you could uh, align things. Um, by selecting all the image, um, all the objects you want to align, click position, and then it is center. Cool, that's everything. Carla says, "What if you want to put the byline text on top of a little color block background?" Okay, we can do that. Um, all we gotta do is make a block. How do you make a block? To make a block, you go through elements. In elements. Um, there should be a shape. Is it? Can we go look for a square? Okay. So, um, so like they have these free, um, basic elements, right? So here we have an element, and then we're just gonna scale it to the size of our byline right here, and then we're gonna set the color. How do we do that? Good question. I think it's this. Nope. That's copy style. The fuck. I'm sure you can do color. Do I double click it? What is it? Oh, it's right here. Color. Boom. Even on the app, it's kind of like not intuitive, but whatever. You'll find it eventually. Um, and uh, oh, there's actually this color that's pretty much like my uh, like my paper. And then we're going to rotate this. So, Brian, to answer your question, um, in comparison to Photoshop, Canva is. Sh but um, it gets the job done, <laughs> like, you know, and, and uh, you know, like the, the learning curve for Photoshop is super high, but once you're over that curve, like, like it, boom. Okay, Carla, um, here's the thing. Um, okay, uh, the, you'll see that like this, this, um, this block goes over this text, but it goes under 
this white text and that's called layering um, in Photoshop and in most uh, photo editing programs they work by layers so, and it's very important um, what goes on top of what layer so for example um, these strips of paper are going on top of the photo background layer what I want is I want this text to go on top of this uh, rectangle layer so to ensure that um, I believe it is position and then you see um, there's forward and backward, which means go forward, like go closer to the top or, or backward, you know, go go further down. Um, so here we're going to put just push this back. Why don't you want to go? I don't care. And now we're going to um, set the color of the text to that color black. And then we're gonna move it down. Boom. And there we go. Now we have a box behind the byline. Hope that answers that question. Cool. Uh, I believe that's everything. So, a uh, quick review of what we just did. So we adjusted it, it look, um, so, so it looks right. And then uh, we looked at the text and we made sure that the text, you know, like is, a, is, a, is a certain font that gives us the feel that the, that the poetry gives us. And lastly, we placed it on, um, we looked at the image and figured out what's the best way to compose it so it works best with the image. And this is what we got. Cool. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Queen David, Penkley Prime Minister. If you like that, um, please follow us on Instagram uh, at Penkley, P E N C L I Q U E, on Facebook at Penkley, on Twitter we are at the Penkley. Unfortunately, it's a long story, you know. But um, or please subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll be dropping more tutorials or just dope poetry content. And on uh, on on uh, on your favorite podcast platform because we are the most popping poetry podcast in the galaxy. You know what it is. Um, yeah, this uh, live went way too long, but um, I'm glad that like you guys joined me.